So welcome everyone. This is 14.4. Yeah, this lesson is on 14.4, but this week we are going to get into the module 14 review. And your assessment is um, coming up. So module 14.4 is all about perpendicular lines and perpendicular bisectors. So what are they is your essential question. And how do I use this information to solve problems? So we're gonna answer those essential questions in this lesson. And the first vocab word that we have are perpendicular lines, okay? So perpendicular lines are lines that intersect at a 90 degree angle, okay? And what you have to know is this box here, yeah? That box is signifies that it is uh, that they that those lines are perpendicular. All right. So whenever you see that box on two lines, that means that they are perpendicular. All right. And perpendicular means that they they intersect at a ninety degree angle. All right. Just like a square, a rectangle has 90 degrees, perpendicular lines also have, um, they intersect at a 90 degree. Okay. So now the second word that we have to know are bisectors. A bisector is something, right? A line, a ray, or a segment that cuts a segment or angle in half. I have a picture of a segment bisector. Okay, that means that segment AB, segment AB bisects segment PQ. Okay, that means if they bisect it, then PF is congruent to QF. All right. That's what a bisector does, something that just cuts it in half. Okay, so that's what a bisector is. Now we're gonna put those two um, definitions together, perpendicular lines and bisector, and we get a perpendicular bisector. Yeah. So that means that there are two lines, FI and SH, or two segments, right? That are perpendicular, meaning that their 90 degree angle is right there, right? Signifying from that box. Bisector, meaning that wherever they intersect, that's the halfway point of SH. Yeah. Okay. Right? So we have a lot of information here. I'm gonna label this um, point A. Okay, so if this is, if FI or IF is the perpendicular, and that is the symbol for perpendicular, just a vertical line and a horizontal line, bisector of SH, segment SH, then if IF is the perpendicular bisector of SH, then I know that angle SAF, among others, 
equals measure of angle SAF equals 90 degrees and SA is congruent to HA. Okay, that they are congruent to each other. Okay, so then there's a lot of um, information to, to play with, right? You have a lot of information to use in your in your toolbox. All right. So there are two theorems, one theorem basically, and it's just um, the the reverse of that theorem, so it goes both ways. So this is the perpendicular bisector theorem. Okay, so let's read this together as I read out loud. If a point is on the perpendicular bisector of a segment, this point, A, is on the perpendicular bisector of SH, right? So that's my if statement. So if I have that point A is perpendicular and it's bisecting, right? Perpendicular because it's 90 degree angle, bisecting because SA is congruent to HA, then it is equal distant from the endpoints of the segment. What does that mean? What does equal distant mean? Equal, yeah. Equal in distance, right? Equal distant. Equal in distance. Okay. So then it is equal in distance from the endpoints of the segment. What does that mean? Seg they're talking about segment FI here. Okay. What does that mean? Endpoints of the segment are SH, FI, right? So if I draw a line there and I draw a line here, they are equal in distance, okay? If it's on the perpendicular bisector, then I know that. Okay, so we have an isosceles triangle here, right? Remember, isosceles triangle has two sides that are congruent to each other, right? And my two sides are F, FS, and FH. Then I know that these angles are also congruent to each other because that's an isosceles triangle. Okay, so again, one piece of information leads us to more information in geometry. All right, notice that we just started off with FI is the perpendicular bisector of SH, right? That means that we have 90 degrees, we have these two segments that are congruent, and based off of the perpendicular bisector theorem, I know FS is congruent to FH, right? And that makes an isosceles triangle. Therefore, these two angles are congruent. A lot of information. Okay, cool. Now, what else works is the converse to the perpendicular bisector theorem or flip it, flip it around, right? If a point is equal distant, equal in distance, right, from the endpoints of the segment. So that means if I already know that these two lines are congruent, right? If we have these blue lines that are congruent, okay, then I know. 
that it lies on the perpendicular bisector, right? If a point is equal distance from the endpoints of the segment, the blue, right? This is in blue on my picture. Then it lies on the perpendicular bisector. This is in red of the segment. Okay, if blue, then red. All right. Okay, if blue, then red. All right. And again, since it's an isosceles triangle, I know that is congruent to that. Right, so we have the same picture, but the order of information is different. Right? Okay. So that is your theorem for today. But we do need to know another formula, which is the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, remember a squared plus b squared equals c squared, right? We do need to know this because we're going to use it on this section or in this section. Okay, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Your a and your b, they are interchangeable, right? I don't care if this side is a or if this side is b. All I care about is that c value needs to be the longest side, okay? Quick question. Is this angle here and this angle here greater than or less than 90? Less than 90, right? Why? Can someone go through that reasoning with me? Why are, let's say angle B and angle A. Why are they less than 90? Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Right? So the angles of a 90 degree or a triangle has to add up to 180. Correct? I already know that angle C here is equal to 90, right? So the sum of these two guys have to add up to 90 because 90 plus 90 is 180, right? So A and B has to be less than 90 degrees, which is less than angle C, correct? So back to my main point, how do I know that this side here is my hypotenuse, it's always gonna be across from that 90 degree angle, okay? Remember Pythagorean theorem only works on right triangles. only works on right triangle, okay? So locate where the 90 degree angle is, get that opposite side, and that's my C. And then A and B are interchangeable, okay? So that's how we, that's all the theorems we know. Jumping right into an example here. Use a diagram here to find the length. Find the length. BP is the perpendicular bisector of AC. So if BP, where's BP? This guy here is the perpendicular bisector, right? So then AB is congruent to BC, right? Perpendicular bisector. What do we know? That's a right triangle, P, A, B, okay, or P, B, C. 
What else? What else do we know? Based off of the theorem, what do we know? Angle A, P, B, and angle what? P, A, B are equal to each other? No, not necessarily. No, not necessarily. Oh, these right angles? Yeah, all of them are right angles. But based off of the theorem that we just went over, what do we know? Based off of the perpendicular bisector theorem class, if we have the perpendicular bisector, which we do, right? BP is the perpendicular bisector of <coughs> AC. So which one is equal in this? DA is congruent to PC, right? Yeah. CQ then, this guy here, is the perpendicular bisector of BD, meaning I know that they're congruent, that they're 90 degree angles. And since this guy has one tick mark, this guy will also have one tick mark, right? So now what do I know? That B, what? C, D, Q, this angle here? That's not in 90 degrees. What do we know based off of the, pi the perpendicular bisector theorem? we know that these guys are congruent to each other, right? That means that all of the, this angle here, PCB is congruent to PAB, yes. And QBC is congruent to QDC, yes. I think you labeled it incorrect. So jumping to the questions, AP is five, okay? What is the length of PC then? Five, okay? Suppose that AP equals five again, BQ is equal to eight, what is the length of QD? Where is Q? QD is here? Eight. Okay. And then don't forget your units. Centimeters, centimeters. Okay. I have one more and then we'll be done for today. Yeah. Given PA is congruent to PC and BA is congruent to BC, if I know that it's an isosceles triangle, I also know 90 degrees, right? And this one is also 90 degrees, correct? Yeah.
So if angle one plus angle two equals 90 degrees and number one here says angle measure of angle two equals 38, find measure of angle one. Measure of angle one is going to equal 90 minus 38. Right? So then that's 52 degrees. Okay? Suppose that PA is 10, PB is 6. What is the length of AC? So I have to figure out what this length is, correct? Yeah. PA equals 10. PB equals 6. So I'm going to use the Pythagorean theorem here. Okay. Notice that this is a right triangle, right? So I have a right triangle like this. That's 10, 6, and I'm going to put X. Okay? So we have that. Do we know, who knows off the top of their head what X equals? No, so that that side A B. Or yes. What is it, guys, on the top of your head? It's a three, four, five triangle. Times two. Okay, there are special right triangles that are there, but if you don't know it, my C value is going to be 10, right? So I know X squared plus six squared equals 100, 10 squared. Right, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So x squared plus 36 equals 100. Subtract 36 from both sides. x equals 64. x squared equals 64. And then you have to square root it. So it's 8. Right? So this guy here, AB is eight. BC is also eight, right? Because they're equal to each other. So what is AC? Huh? No. 16. Okay. It's 16 because AC is the whole thing, 8 plus 8. Yeah. Okay. There are, let's go back to the Pythagorean theorem page or slide here. All right. It only works on right triangles, yes. But there are some special right triangles that you guys should know. Okay? The sides will always work like this. The first one is three, four, five. All right? So if you see, any combination or any multiple of a three, four, five triangle, you know what to do, right? So if you look here, what I'm saying is six divided by two is three. 10 divided by two is five. So we have three, this has to be four and five, right? Three, four, five triangle. That's why it's eight. Because if you divide 10 by 2, 
you get five. Multiply four by two, you get eight. Cool? So that's the first one, three, four, five. Next one is a seven, 24, 25. Third one would be eight, 15, 17. And any multiple of that, okay? These three for now, all right? So that is the two examples for 14.4. What are perpendicular lines? There are two lines that intersect at a 90 degree angle. What is a perpendicular bisector? They intersect at a or a 90 degree angle and they bisect, right? They cut in half uh, whatever they intersect. How do I use this information to solve problems? I just showed you two examples. Okay, that's the lesson for today. Thank you very much and I'll see you on the next one.